aber das ist richtig und so. So many slay koshna gornunsa. Just slay be hanalai and the car for nunsa. Rafriquika akla akla no haruma. Take no one in so. Take no one so. Muhaka nam param param prabhu se na haruka parameswar ho. This young man is giving the same questions that they give in America, in Bangladesh, India, Africa. Oh, so if someone doesn't hear about Jesus, does he go, deserve to go to hell? Well, absolutely. Your sin brings you to hell. This man doesn't think he's a sinner. He's told lies, and it's wrong to tell a lie. A murderer is bad, but he's not a bad man in his own mind. See, that's pride, and I won't even share the truth of the gospel with him. I won't share Jesus his love with him because he hates the goodness that is in Jesus Christ. He wants to lift himself up as a sinner. And you can't lift your sin up before God's eyes. God's not going to look on it. The man needs to be humbled and he needs to repent. But he hates Jesus Christ. It's the same everywhere. These two men stopped when they saw us preaching. Bishnu is really rebuking the man and says, if you don't want to repent, if you don't want to acknowledge your sins, then you go to hell. You go and enjoy your lot in hell. That's all you have. Beautiful. The same objections you find all over the world. People hate the love of Jesus Christ because they love their sins. It's as simple as that. And here's someone receiving God's word, someone humble, asking questions. Beautiful. There's a war in the heavenlies. Pray for us. Decided to come out on a Saturday. It's a pretty lazy day. Most people are off work, just trying to enjoy the weather. Thought we'd give them the gospel. See what they'll do. In Balawatar. I think Jesse used to live nearby here. Here's a foreigner. Try to offer a track, see what she says. Ma'am, did you get one of these? We're blessing to her. Dai Haru. During the preaching, we give out Gospels of John and Gospel of Christ. The man back here said that, no, I don't want one of those. I don't need it. I asked him why. He wouldn't tell me why. I kept asking him. He finally said, well, all gods are the same. Hindu, Buddhist, Islam, it's all the same. All gods are the same. There's only one God. That sounds like a Harvard professor. It sounds like a typical Christian in America. It's a sad thing. It's a doctrine that's infiltrated the whole world. He died for your sins. He rose from the grave and he commands. He doesn't just suggest. He commands that you repent and be born again. Believe on him. That's what he said. That's what God said. Now if you reject him, then guess what? You get to answer for every crime you've committed against God. Every single crime you've committed against God, you will answer for them if you don't turn to Jesus Christ.
patent over square in the heart of darkness. No man is forbidding us. We've already preached in English, Beach News, in Nepali now. We've preached a foreigner. Think of Paul in uh, Rome, at the end of Acts. It said he spent two whole years in his own entire house. Preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, no man forbidding him. What a gift from the Lord to come into a temple of an idol, of idols, temples of idols, and preach no man forbidding. Amen. Sister from India is preaching in Hindi now. A lot of people speak in Hindi. A lot of tourists from India. This is Bhaktapur, about uh, 10, 12 kilometers to the east of Kathmandu. Uh, center of Newari Hinduism. Kind of a halfway busy market here on a Friday afternoon. Time to take advantage of every opportunity we have to preach here because soon we'll be leaving this country. A good team with us today. Enjoy working with the Nepali brethren. Brethren giving out gospel. John here. We're here in Bhaktapur. Jesse's preaching to the locals here. Many have come out of their shops to hear what's going on, what's the message all about. Handing out Gospels of John and Gospel tracts. This woman is very excited to receive one. Brother Lakshmi giving out some information to these men. He came up after the preach and asking him some questions. Took some Gospels of John and Gospel track. Not turned away by preaching, but rather drawn. Drawn by God's hand. It's amazing how God moves through His Word being proclaimed. It's very simple. Slums along the Bagmati River, distributing chocolates and some biscuits and trying to preach about Jesus here. Pustak Linos! Ekchin! Sati Kojola! Nikal Nounsa! Mitai Bonda, Pustak Mahatwa Purna Tsakina Bani Parameswar Ko Bhatsan Ho. Ani Jessari Paramesh, Jessari Yi Pustak Ramitai Sitai Hun. Jessari Parameswar Ko Nanda Mukti Poni Sitai Ho. Parameswar Le Hami Lai Prem Gornabaya Ko Tsa. Jessgaran Hamru Nimti Uhako Afno Ek Matra Zan Maya Ka Putra Dinabaya. Bible lay bonds of Taki Uha Mati Biswash Gorne Koi Pani Nasta Naos Tarananda Zivan Paos Mero Satyaru Esu Chris lay Mero Zivan Pari Wartan Gorne Boyo Ani Aru lay Prem Garekule Yo Sunday Sunaunu Porza Today we figured we'd just go find a intersection somewhere in the north part of the city. I don't know what the name of this place is, but we decided to just open up and start preaching, giving out Gospels of John and small gospel tracts, posing the question, haven't you heard? You know, there's a pretty powerful testimony of God's creation here in Nepal. The Himalayas stretch all the way across the country. 
they've heard from God, from that testimony of God's power and might, but also from their conscience. Right now, Jesse's going through the Romans road, preaching Christ from the scriptures. Today is a strike in Kathmandu, so we're just walking south out of my house into the valleys. Brother John and Brother Bishnu are distributing gospel materials here to the wheat farmers that are out threshing in this beautiful valley. So we're about two to three miles from Ring Road. You can see it becomes rural very fast. And uh, we're just going to keep walking until all these materials are distributed. This country is falling apart. We leave in about nine days, eight days. So we're trying to sow as many seeds as possible, not according to our plans, but God has different plans. So the country's in an uproar. We're walking through the fields, and uh, hopefully many will hear the gospel today and be saved. It's beautiful and quiet out here. What's that you got in your hand, Ricky? There's marijuana growing everywhere here. Hmm. She's sitting here right on the side of the road. Cannabis. Okay. This would be a hippie's dream. Here we are in Chapagaon, the suburb of Kathmandu. It's about five, six miles out here from the house. It's distributing as God gives opportunity. I think the bund is finished. We've given out about a hundred Johns and a bunch of tracks. Our brother from Lamjung here is helping to sow seeds. We're down here in another one of the slum settlements on the Bagmati, west side of Kathmandu. There's a church down here. It's very interesting. All of these settlements are temporary structures built by the landless people, many of them untouchable caste. And the government's already bulldozed some of these settlements along the Bagmati, and they've been threatening to do that down here. Now, the place we targeted a week or so ago was razed to the ground the day after. There was a small church there that was destroyed, so the government never decides to come in here, which they're threatening to do. These places will be ransacked, so we're just trying to go down through here and sow some seeds of the gospel. This is our last opportunity for outreach here in Nepal. We depart this place in just a couple of days, headed for Tibet and China. So we're trying to share the Christ with as many people here in the Nepali language as possible. I don't know when God will let me share Christ in Nepali again. I don't touch that cord. <laughs> so we're going to hang clothes here on power lines. Hmm, that seems smart. This is a dump. But these people are more open to the gospel because they're lacking this world's good. And so they're not trusting in riches. They're seeking hope. Jesus Christ brings hope.
As we were preaching here in the slums, these ladies came by and heard Jesse's lifting up of Jesus' name. And a lot of them are Christians. They just said, praise God, thank Him, thank the Lord for this. God bless you in your preaching. God has his saints all over the world. Whether we do it, whether we obey him or not, he saves people. Well, we decided to come through this market. All the fruit wholesalers from Kathmandu are here. All of this fruit's been driven up from India, down along the Bagmati, and we're just giving out Gospels of John here after preaching in the shanty town. Encouraged to see and meet some believers. They were encouraged. This is quite a way to go out here in Nepal, our last outreach before having to leave this place. And um, what a privilege and an honor for it to have been amongst the poor of the poor. The poor are precious in the sight of God. He hears their plight. He hears their cries. And uh, they are always more apt to hear the truth because their trust is not in the riches of this world. So we pray the seeds sown here today will not return void and that the Lord will allow us to come back to this place in his time. But until then, thankful to God, praising God that he has his servants who were born here in Hinduism but have turned from uh, idolatry to light. Brother Vishnu here is a bold preacher. And uh, Lakshmi here, who was saved out of radical Hinduism. Busy about the work of the Lord. Praise God. He has his remnant in all places. Any thoughts on your last outreach here in Nepal? I don't even know a place like this existed. It smells terrible, but there's a lot of people down here, and a lot of them are taking tracks. And that guy back there says he drove up here for five days from southern India. Wow. That's a long way to drive to hear the gospel, but Amen. he did hear it. Amen. Well, in God's timing, we'll share the gospel in Nepali again. Amen.